This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman, as we turn to the story of Centoya Brown, who on Monday was granted full clemency by Republican Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam after serving 15 years in prison. The decision follows months of intense public pressure and outrage over her case. Brown was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of first-degree murder for shooting her rapist as a teenager. She had been sexually trafficked, repeatedly abused and drugged. The shooting happened when Brown was just 16 years old, but she was tried as an adult. That was Amy Goodman on her program of January 10, 2019. You can find the full version on YouTube. You have just watched her tell her viewers a pack of lies about the convicted murderess Centoya Brown, knowing full well they were lies. Sadly, she is far from unique. We hear these kinds of easily debunked lies time and time and time again from the mainstream media and in Goodman's case from the not so mainstream media. It's little wonder that so many people believe in conspiracy theories when almost all media outlets are singing from the same hymn sheet. Here is Goodman again on October 18th of the same year, parroting the same lies, lies Brown herself never disavowed. At the age of 16, she was arrested for killing a man who'd picked her up for sex after she'd been forced into sexual slavery as a child. She was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of first-degree murder for shooting her rapist. Today, Centoya Brown Long joins us to share her experience, what's happened in the 15 years since she was incarcerated, and how she won her release. The facts about Centoya Brown, the true facts, are easily found. But you won't hear them from Amy Goodman or from the NAACP, so here they are. She was born Centoria Mitchell on January 29, 1988, and after her white trash mother gave her up, she was adopted by a black woman who could only be described as exemplary. Even so, when she was a teen, or perhaps a bit before that, she started going off the rails. A juvenile delinquent isn't beyond redemption per se, but there are limits. She ran away from home constantly and hooked up with a dude named as Cutthroat, or just Cut. That sounds really sinister, which is probably the point. His real name was Gary M. McLaughlin. He was a small time drug dealer and thief. Doubtless he had his own hard luck story, but wayward boys get far less sympathy than wayward girls. He was eight years older than her and was shot dead the following year. McLaughlin may have been a bad dude. But the claim he forced Brown into prostitution and that she was trafficked doesn't hold water. For one thing, she carried a gun in her purse. How many trafficked women, how many sex slaves do that? She could have left McLaughlin at any time and gone back to her home. She chose not to. And even a 16-year-old has that much agency. On the night of August 6th, or early morning of August 7th, 2004, Brown murdered Johnny Allen as he slept. In Tennessee, the age of consent is a whopping 18, so a man who has sex with a 16-year-old is technically guilty of statutory rape. But here is where it gets complicated. For one thing, when she was arrested, Brown lied about her age, giving her date of birth as January 29, 1985. The police took her at their word. That makes it likely she lied to her victim too. Also, there is no evidence that Alan actually had sex with Brown. Indeed, she claims he didn't. One of Alan's friends said or implied he was on a mission to save a young way from the streets. It is more likely, however, that he was simply lonely and looking for female company. He took her home, they ate together and watched TV together. Then, probably because he had rather a lot to drink, he went to bed by himself. And Centoria Brown shot him in the back of the head as he slept. Men who use the services of prostitutes don't usually take them home. If they do, have you ever heard of a man taking home a prostitute and eating a TV dinner with her? Seriously. In England, crime scene photographs of this nature are generally kept under lock and key for anything up to a hundred years to spare the family and friends of victims' distress. Take a look at these three photographs, screen grabs from a documentary about this case, and make up your own mind. Was this man a sexual predator who came from a sticky end? Or was he the victim of a cold-blooded killer who stole his truck and robbed his apartment afterwards, taking his money and his debit card? Was that perhaps her intention all along? 
It is notable that her so-called trafficker had nothing to do with this crime, although it was revealed later that the gun used to murder Johnny Allen was used in another shooting. In February 2004, a young woman named Rachel Browning was shot in a robbery. She was clinically dead no fewer than four times, was in a cobra for a month and bedridden for three years. She was left paralysed for life. Rachel's recovery is a genuinely inspirational story, but there have been no documentaries made about her. When Goodman said Brown's case had caused outrage, she was alluding to a media frenzy a decade and more after her conviction. This was caused by well-meaning but gullible celebrities making ill-informed pronouncements on the case, perhaps after watching a clip or two on YouTube. When Brown first appeared in court, the lawyers put her in pigtails to make her look about 12. But even 12 year olds are capable of evil, and when brought to book for terrible crimes, they warrant severe punishment. New developments in the Slender Man case. One of the two girls who stabbed a classmate to please a fictional horror character has now been sentenced for the crime. And ABC's Lindsay Davis is here with the latest. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Georgia. Tearful apology in court Thursday from Morgan Geyser. And I'm sorry to her former friend for stabbing her 19 times. But the Wisconsin judge still gave her the maximum sentence. A teenage girl who likely won't experience freedom until her 50s because of a crime she committed when she was 12. Here is Brown after her release talking to another Muppet. Note the feminist narrative. Nothing she did was her fault, ever. And she's found Jesus, by the way. So when I went in, I struggled with anger. I struggled with shame. Um, I blamed myself for a lot of the situations that I was in. Um, and I was really harsh on myself. And you know, it just, it was a process of learning to forgive myself, to understand that every situation that I was placed in, you know, it wasn't like I was just willingly making these decisions. I was a child. Um, there were adults who were around who were exploiting, who were taking advantage, who were manipulating, and I don't, I don't have to take ownership of that, that that's something that I did to myself. Here's an extract from her failed appeal. Jennifer Martin, a juvenile justice case manager with the Department of Children's Services, testified that she supervised the defendant from January 2002 through March 2003 when the defendant was placed at DCS's Woodland Hills Youth Development Centre. Martin acknowledged that Woodland Hills is a secure youth development centre and said that children placed at the facility attended a fully accredited high school. She said that the defendant had been tested and determined gifted, so she was in the gifted program. Martin said that after the defendant completed her placement at Woodland Hills, she was released to the custody of her adoptive mother, initially on a 30-day home pass and then on a permanent basis, during which time DCS still maintained intensive supervision over her. Martin said that the defendant had no problems following directions during her placement at Woodland Hills. Martin said that the defendant is a very smart girl. She noted, however, that the defendant had numerous fights, including one in which she threw a chair across the room and others in which she assaulted both workers and fellow students. Martin further described the defendant as very manipulative. If she doesn't like what she's been asked to do, she'll choose not to do it. Doesn't sound quite the little girl lost here, does she?